Ted and Tully, he, Ted, and, oh, he broke his arm. He would run, he's like, yeah. he's all, yeah, he's yeah, all, I think yeah. I broke my, I think I broke my shoulder. I'm like, dude, relax, you didn't break it your shoulder. It was his shoulder, that's what he's it was. Like, I think, you you think I should video. get an MRI? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and then he calls me the next day, dude, I wouldn't go to an MRI. It's not broke. I'm like, no, it's not broke. You're just old. I it just happens like that. When you hit See, that, you're the like. See, like the punk rockers, like probably more than anyone, when it comes down to it, they're super, super sensitive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the hardcore guys. Now there's a liquid death vert ramp. And he wanted to drop in on it, and I guess I didn't go to the first session. He texts me that night and goes, "Dude, I was there all day. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I'm couldn't like, drop couldn't in. What? He's like, drop in. I'm like, why not? Right. And he's like, I don't, I don't know, man. Just you know, what I mean, it freaks me out. I'm not used to it. Yeah. And I was like, dude, uh, you're insulting me. <laughs> and he right. goes, what? Right. I'm like, your level of skateboarding and you not dropping in yeah. is an insult yeah, to yeah, all right. of us. That's right. Your level, you will just drop in and go, what the hell was that all about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I go there like three days later and he comes late because that's how he rolls, all tweaked out about dropping in uh -huh. and he made it. I'm a good coach. Do you think that that's was the, the day he that's sent it. me that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was he, so proud, dude. dude. He sent me the same picture four he times. He turned into like I was like, I got like it. A you dropped in. <laughs> yeah. I got He's it. Like, dude, he just kept dropping. Are you sure in. you saw it? Because you haven't replied yet. <laughs> I did. I go, yeah. No, but you've not replied. And yeah. he was like, Can you believe this? I was like, That's like the last picture. Yeah. He was like, This. I know this. No, this. He this, kept this, doing this, it that whole afternoon. He's like, Wait, I'm gonna do it again. I'm like, I already. I know. I know you can do it. Are you looking for a delicious and nutritious snack that packs real protein punch? Don't, don't punch me. It says Tony punch Jason, but don't punch me. I would never do Because I'm that. holding pistachios in my hand. Wait and a minute. they'll fall on the floor. You got to crack into a good source of protein <laughs> with tasty, healthy, wonderful pistachios. Ow. Each one ounce serving of wonderful pistachios contains six grams of protein, giving you over 10% of your daily value, mate. Pistachios are known for their protein power, fiber, better for you, unsaturated fats for a combination that will help keep you feeling fuller longer. Wonderful pistachios come in a variety of flavors and sizes, perfect for enjoying with your family and friends, or taking them with you on the go during your summer adventures. Check out wonderfulpistachios.com to learn more about how these little green wonders can power up your day. Jason. Yeah? I'm sorry, I gotta pause this episode Why? for a second to give you guys a very important discount code, so listen up. Head to tryfume.com and use code HVW to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. Fume is not a vape. It's a non-electronic device designed to transform your negative habits. Instead of pods filled with potentially harmful chemicals like a vape, Fume uses cores infused with plants like peppermint and cinnamon for delicious natural flavors. It's really fun to play with. Your fingers will always have something to do. The easiest way to stop a bad habit is to switch to a positive one and Fume is designed perfectly to do just that. They have thousands of five-star reviews from people just like you who've successfully switched when other solutions just didn't work. Head to tryfume.com and use the code HVW to save 10% off when you get your journey pack today, mate. The journey pack comes with three unique flavors. The new version 2 Fume to help kickstart your positive habits. That's T-R-Y-F-U-M.com and use code HVW to save an additional 10% off on your order today. Yeah, do it. Go. Do it. I dare you. That's funny, dude. Yeah, he's a... He's a I'm toddler. supposed to see him tomorrow, and he, you know, he, he, I, I go, you know, he goes, you want to ice or whatever, and oh yeah, he's this like, is he, another trend, and I've been icing <laughs> for 20 years, and I'm Have like, you really, dude, 20 years, probably Who told more you? than that. It was just something I did. From it was like you get I it? run hot and I jump in the ocean surfing my whole life. Yeah. I like doing that. I hated wetsuits, so yeah. I would get in a lot of times when it was super cold in like Central Coast California, oh. Morro Bay and all that. I'd get in with a bathing suit. People were like, you're insane. I was yeah. like, I like this better than being all like constricted with a, with a wetsuit. Yeah. So then I just started getting into it because I liked the way it felt, but I, I did it for wet, like everything. I did it way too much. I would do like 34 degrees at 10, 11, 12 minutes. 
Uh, and then once you start to find out the science of it, you're like, you don't need to do this. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's a cool thing but for I, your you, ego. It sounded like you were doing it not f f for the health benefits necessarily, you're just doing it. There was just something about it. And then, and then, you know, maybe five years ago with Laird, we would do this thing because he lived close by. We'd go back and forth from the sauna to the ice, to the sauna and the ice, and it's just what we did. And it was more just, again, like, a health slash ego thing. Mm -hmm. So then we had the assault bike in one of the saunas. So we would do the assault bike and then do a workout in the pool and then jump in the ice and go in the other 250 yeah, degree exhausted. sauna. That's the circuit. People, yeah. people do that. But that's the circus. It's <laughs> the circus and <laughs> it's the circuit. circuit. But then you start to get into all these people who are pontificating about you know the health benefits and all that. But w the, the biggest thing because my kids, I have older kids, 30 and 35, and I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old. So the two-year-old, the four-year-old's going to school, she brings home colds and all that, so you end up getting colds all the yeah. time. When I started doing the ice every single morning, and I started in Santa Fe when it was like 16 fucking degrees outside, and I said, no matter what, I'm gonna do it for like six or seven months straight, just to see if I see any difference. Yeah. So not only is there the dopamine difference, but there's the fact that I haven't been sick for almost a year, and that's never happened in uh, my lifetime. So that's a cool thing. Wow. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah, we both got one. Yeah. I hate it. You hate it. But I do it. I love it. Yeah. I'm going to start doing it more. I'm so, you're not doing it. Yeah. I am. You want to bet? <laughs> yes. Wanna, yeah, that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. Cause I'll, How do I prove it to you? Film it. Yeah. Film, okay. Don't be, do like what don't be doing else 20 does. seconds. Here I am, three three <laughs> minutes already. I'm still going. Like, don't be doing that to me. Uh, just okay. I'll just I'll just give it to you in real time. Yeah, I want to see like Joe lapse. Rogan video. Time lapse. <laughs> time lapse that work. All right. Hey, I want to see Tony. But you don't space. have to do that. When you get in, you can I, just like relax I, into it. Everybody goes. I go. go. Everyone goes. If you tried the Wim Hof, and I'm like, dude. I got my own technique that yeah. I've been working on. I've been doing this for years. I scream and I cuss and I say. And, and that's I the way say, you do it. Yeah, and that's what I do. That's within your I personality. I find the first minute if I just go, fucking right. bolt, this is, you're an idiot. <laughs> this is for idiots. Why are you doing this? Just play golf. <laughs> And then, yeah. I'm part of a trend. I'm I part of a trend. I I don't do that. You'll make me get I'm out of me. I'm not original. I'm not original. Don't. Don't. <laughs> I'm a sheep. I'm already I'm a sheep. I'm part of the flock. No. Don't. don't. <laughs> I found if I just Frozen if I'm Harry still Carey. if I'm still it. it's okay if I move then I feel the cold. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the thing. That's why uh, hey, it's easier anyway. Josh Brolin is here. Oh yeah, hey. wow. Hey guys. We just you know we started by default. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for making the time. Of course, man. Seriously, um, I like your space here. It's I, it's raw. I am it's a huge cool. fan. I really am a huge fan of your work, and cool. I know even though we like had some connections in the beginning with a certain skateboard movie, mm -hmm. Thrashing. Who would have known both you guys would have become who you are today? <laughs> that movie. So fucking massive. Right? When we started so small. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's not, no, but, thra you know, it's funny, because Thrashing, I've always said, like, they just had, like, a screening the other day, and they hit me up at the last minute, and they said, do you want to come? And I've spoken so much shit about Thrashing because it was, like, a great milestone moment for me because I did the Goonies, which was super lucky. It was this amazing experience. Spielberg, Dick Donner, all these amazing people. It did really well. And then because I think the only reason I got Thrashing is because the poster was up on Sunset Boulevard and I went and auditioned for Th Thrashing and I think I mispronounced spatula. I said spatula during the reading because I'm such a fucking idiot. And then the poster was there and they were like, we got to use that guy because like, look, we're doing this tiny movie. It's about skateboarding. It's kind of this whatever. So I end up doing the movie. I saw the movie. I went to the premiere and I was like, your acting is so bad, you're hurting people. <laughs> you, you thought that? But it, yeah, dude. Did, did you think that in the Goonies? No. I didn't think I was brilliant. I thought I, I serviced the role. Right. But, but, but you that were like, I thought, and that was a great director, and he's cutting, and he's using the right moments and all that kind of stuff. Like, they understand. That's what, when you work with better directors, it's not just about the performance. It's how they're cutting, what kind of music they're using, who yeah. the editor is, all that kind of shit. And I watched Thrashing, which was obviously, it was, you know, you saw the cost. Yeah. It was a tiny movie. Yeah. Yes. 
you know, and then you see me like, no, Chrissy, come back, you know, and you're just like, oh, fuck, dude. But do you think, right. okay, like but you. hold on. <laughs> on, the, on the flip side of that, do you think that if if your acting had been better or if there was a, dude, there's no if there that was that a movie. De Niro in the role, yeah. would that have saved the movie? No. No. So you're suggesting that the movie's bad? I'm, yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying. I can't. I wasn't in it. It's terrible. <laughs> it's pretty bad. See, that's it's the so thing. Terrible, it's, people, it's, awesome. it's so terrible. This is, it's awesome. This is it's so terrible. It's awesome. Then you get to a point, which I think you and I have gotten, we've gotten to, that you look back and you're like, okay, when people come up and they say, hey, man, you saved my life. And you're like, how? And they go, when I watched Thrashing, everything changed for me. I come from this childhood, everything changed. I got into skateboarding because of Thrashing. And you go, okay, so it's actually irresponsible of me to when people come up and they go, hey, I love Thrashing. And you go, Thrashing sucked. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. And you don't yeah. make it personal like that. And yeah. you go, oh, good, man. I'm glad you liked it. Thanks a lot. And then you kind of resort to that one. Pretty hard yeah. not to laugh in his face, though. I went through that <laughs> transition or whatever. I went, I, went, I, I went through that cycle with Gleaming the Cube. Oh, yeah. Where it was like, dude, it's not it's yeah, it's so gleaming weird. The it's not, well, the skateboarding doesn't really fit in it. But Totally. But then people are just like, that, that was my favorite movie of all time. There you that go. spoke to me. And, and I've heard that about like, well, Yeah, because. I definitely wanted to be in the Daggers. <laughs> well, yeah. You, yeah. Didn't, you didn't want to be a guy from the valley. No, no, it made most sense. I didn't want to be a guy from the valley, and I was playing a guy from the valley. Right. The coolest thing about thrashing some great to acting. me mm. when when it happened yeah. was that uh, Del Mar Skate Ranch, my local spot, yeah. was closed. Was closed, it and was they closed. opened it up for that. And they thing. opened it up for thrashing because thrashing had their own insurance. That was super cool. So we got to skate Del Mar for two days. Yeah. And then back off again forever. And it closed forever. And it closed forever after. That was like the but last time we That was you. That was you. It was still there, rideable. It was yeah, still there, rideable. We totally would get, rideable. We get kicked that. out because it was, you know, there's all these stuff, all the stuff connected to it. That one main bowl, that one, I remember yeah. that one main bowl you were riding, Christian was riding it, yeah. Ross was there. Dude, it was like our own it party. It was amazing. Yeah, it was and then cool. they, they changed my name in there for some reason. I don't know. What why. was it? Like the my character. They're yeah, like, what was All right, your character? It, what was it? I his think name? it was like Tony Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> and Tony Hanks is up next. And then yeah. I, hey, I don't care. I guess. You know, like Tom Hanks. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, successful. It's a more successful sound. But do name. you remember that you and I ended up at this is I wrote about this in my book, um, mm. but I remember it so vividly. You and I were at uh, the Tarzan premiere. That, I remember it well. Yeah. I thought about that. And uh, yeah. and he walked by and instinctually I was just like, Corey! Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which, and at then that he point, turned I'm around, still he dying. turned around, he's like, someone just called me Corey. Corey. Yeah, yeah. And he looks at me and he's like, that is hilarious. Like, <laughs> oh, because you knew who he was. Yeah, of course, right. man. <laughs> it's Tony Hanks. You know what I mean? <laughs> Tony Hanks. The who great doesn't Tony, know Tony Hanks, Hanks, man. No, man. And it was, I was with Minnie at the time. Yeah. And I remember. You know, I mean, he, you were always this guy, man, because for me, it was like the Goonies happened and then Thrashing happened. And then it was kind of, then I did Highway to Heaven. So it was all kind of downhill from there. <laughs> and then nobody gave a fuck until, I, I, there were a couple movies in there that I was really proud of, but for the most part, for like 20 plus years, nobody gave a shit. And you were just kind of on, you were always doing well. You were on an upward trajectory. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I, I suppose. I mean, except for <laughs> thrashing and gleaming the cure. <laughs> no, I mean there was there were some lean years for sure, but there I, was I know, but, but leaner years. Yeah, you know what I mean. Maybe you had you had a higher fluctuation. Uh -huh. I had a lower fluctuation. So yeah, when I saw you in, in Tarzan, I was like, motherfuckers, like doing the voice for Tarzan. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Not the voice, but like, the what's, oh the yeah, motion. the skating, the, the motion, motion yeah. the motion capture, and all that kind of stuff. And it was super cool. And I it brought my kids. Cool. Yeah, remember I brought my kids and were so into oh, it. Oh, I, I was so like, hyped to see you. I mean, I, I think that's why that I excitedly. Cool. I know your name, but excited. I was just like, ah, I'm thrashing. Like, yes, he's here. It's kind of cool. It was cool. Hey, it's official. I found the softest T-shirt of all time. So soft, it's absurd. This is from San Francisco-based brand Marine Layer. Marine Layer is a go-to brand for great fitting stylish closet staples. Marine Layer T-shirts stay so soft no matter how many times you wash them. For a limited time, you'll get an exclusive 15% off discount with the code WOLF15 at marinelayer.com. They've even got sizes like Marge, which is between medium and large. Yeah, no, I got it. So everyone can get their perfect fit. The best part, 
You can buy any three tees from Marine Layer. You automatically get 20% off. Get one for you, some for your friends and family. Boom! You've won the holidays. They'll literally pay you for your old tees with their tea respun program. The perfect tea can be hard to find. Look no further than Marine Layer. For a limited time, get 15% off with the code WOLF15 at marinelayer.com. That's code WOLF15 for 15% off your entire order. Marinelayer.com. Saving your closet one shirt at a time. Do you rescue tigers and bears? No, my mom. So yeah. how does one get involved with rescuing tigers and bears? My mother was from Corpus Christi, Texas. This is the quick version. My mom is from Corpus Christi, Texas. She's not around anymore. She had an animal obsession from super early on. So she'd get a dog and she'd hide it in the garage, that kind of thing. So she had like an animal thing. Like she a, didn't deal with people so well. Are you an animal well. person? Hugely. Right. Hugely. But yeah. we don't have any animals right now which is a problem for us yeah. because we travel so much. Oh, of course. So yeah. we've been talking about, like, my kids want an animal and my wife's like, should we this? But we're traveling. Do we bring it with us? Do we yeah. get a big dog? Do we get a small dog? Whatever. But I grew up with many, many, many wolves. We were in Paso Robles, California, Central Coast. We had 230 acres, so 65 horses, a lot of wolves, a lot of mountain lions. Once in a while, a bear would be there. Once in a while, a lion would be there. And my mom was one of these like grizzly Adam types that would like walk in the cage of any animal, any yeah. disposition. Yeah. And they would they would cower. They would. No way. Like yeah, she just was, had a gift. Yeah, whether it's a gift or whether it's insanity, and they picked up on it, it was. It's a gift. Way. It is a gift. Yeah. There's a thing that I mean. Look, man. I love my mother so much in the book that I'm writing, because I know you, you in the book that I'm writing, which was unintentional because it's like kind of like an unconventional memoir and it's turned out to be unconventional because it's really mother heavy. And I'm like, wow, man, there's like the stories about my dad. It's kind of one here, one there, one there. And then there's 60 about my mother or 70 mm. about my mother. It's big, big personality. Yeah. Very difficult to get along with. It was a love-hate thing with everybody, and right. I have everybody's story. But there was this thing with animals, where she would, she just connected, man. Yeah. It was the Grizzly Adams kind of thing. She just connected with those animals, and that was always the case until the end. So yeah, it was cool. She was cool, tough to did, grow up with, but did cool. You, so did you have tigers in your backyard? Oh yeah, man. No, 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 no. You don't even know. Like you know, I'd well, I want to. I would wake up to. Bobcats biting my cheek, and there would be blood, and you know, and I. I'm sorry, but that's so I, cool. <laughs> whatever. It is cool, dude. I would. Kill, I've always wanted to be attacked by a you shark. Thought, you thought the wrong you What attacked by what? A shark. A shark. Be, that's attacked like by the coolest shark. tag. You're I the only get. one going. You think being near dingoes was cool? He's getting bit by a bobcat. That's so sick. So you know, I grew. I would grow up like that, and then we'd go in. My brother had it too, but my brother dealt with it di differently. My brother, I think, was more sensitive to it, whereas I kind of went to war, and I would go in to my mother's room and I'd, I'd be like, look, you know? And she'd go, yeah, that's a love bite. Yeah. And I'd be like, that's a problem, like there's blood. Yeah. And she'd go, yeah, that's a love bite. Yep. So that was just part of the deal. And when we were eight, <laughs> seven or eight, my brother got 60 stitches in his leg because we had to feed the wolves. We had to clean the wolves' cages and all that kind of stuff. So what was got, her reaction to 60 stitches this year? Not when, a big reaction. When you're reaction. bleeding, is it not a panic? Not a big reaction. How does my that affect? My dad's reaction was major. Oh, he was freaking out. <laughs> yeah, it, he was. And look, to be fair, as an emotional reaction, he was like, I'm going to shoot the wolf. Oh, yeah. And my okay. mom said, if you shoot the wolf, I'm going to shoot you. Right. So the wolf didn't get shot. I like her. I'm sure. I know. I, one time, I, <laughs> there's a lot of similarities about, here that I picked up it? on right when I walked in the room, <laughs> and they're not necessarily healthy. No. <laughs> yeah, no. No, I'm sorry for both of us. Which side were you on with the, with the shooting? What? Which side were you on with I the shooting? I was 10. My, my brother was six. And there was a guy working on the ranch that had just gotten out of prison. That's right. So he was an ex-con. And I remember he had big thyroidal eyes. But he would kind of keep him a half mask because he knew it kind of freaked people out. But then when the, he saw the wolf, and I remember seeing because we were putting in plants outside of this garden. And the wolf had gotten out into the garden. And my brother was walking along the garden fence. And the wolf came up and grabbed his leg and pulled him down. And I remember those eyes going, <laughs> you know what I mean? Massive, big balls, yeah. eye, you know. And he was like, and he's the one who went in there and kicked the wolf away and grabbed my brother. My brother wouldn't have made it for sure. 
had wow. he had we not been there. So to answer your question, I think I was just more in shock than anything. You yeah. see a bunch of holes and kind of fair brother's leg. One time I uh, went back to Australia, and I don't go back very often. And I I came with my children, my family there. It's a little, it's pretty broken, but uh, they don't know my family that well. And mm. then we have a house in the bush mm. that I built when I was a kid. And we got off the plane 14 hours and then drove three hours to this place that I used to hang out in. Uh, so I get there, I put my bags in, uh, and, if, and somebody screams, Jason, and I can hear by the tone that it's bad. Mm. So I go running down the hill, and I guess my daughter, she was probably about 10 or 11, maybe 9, something like that, and she fell in the fire pit. There was a fire pit, and these guys were throwing broken glass in the fire pit, and no one cleaned it up, which made me not very happy, happy but she yeah. slipped and fell in there and the car some I go running down there and someone's got a tea towel over her leg with a very serious face. And yeah. I go, get out of the way, let me see. Yeah. <laughs> I move it and I'm like, okay, that's real bad. You know what I mean? But I gotta show was my daughter's just like, we're not going to hospital, we're not getting stitches. And I'm like, we should probably just go get it checked out, but you're probably fine. How I'm, was it though? It was it was like like over, t it was like 15, 16 stitches, but it wow. was, it looked like it had maybe severed a tendon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, was yeah. worried about that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. She would have a scar, you know yeah. how they go up to yeah. get it and pull it back down. Totally, totally. So I'm not saying any of that to anybody, but I'm like, somebody get the car and I've got her and my stepmom's like, so, you know, so, and I'm like, I don't want to be here ever again. <laughs> <laughs> like I brought my children here and you cut them in 15 seconds. Like I just got out of a shower. Yeah. And then this driving, she got car sick because she was in the back and I was holding her and then the first place wouldn't do it and then the second place did and it's the needle. You, you, we, if you've had stitches, yeah. stitches don't yeah. hurt because they give you a needle. The needle is no joke and if you're Burks. like a nine-year-old girl, it is time to wake up. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, it's going to yeah. be okay. A, but it was one of those. <gasps> so, yeah, because I'm like, it's okay. And she's screaming. Look, and I'm like, I can't make it stop. Like, I can't stop it for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, How, old your a, kid? How old were your kids then? Like 10 and 5. And what are they now? 18 and oh, wow. 15. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah I've been told that I have yeah, this I thing Whatever. called catastrophobia. Ooh, it sounds terrible. And I never knew what it was. And my kids used to call it because I have... A two-year-old, a four-year-old, a thirty-year-old, and a thirty-five-year-old. Right? I'm fucking. How old were you when the thirty-five-year-old was? All right, do fuck around. What? How old were you when the thirty-five-year-old was born? I was seven. <laughs> I was seven. Good answer. Thank you. <laughs> All right. No, I was I was twenty when Trevor was born. I was twenty-five when Eden was born. I was fifty when Westlin was born, and I was fifty-two when Chapel was born. That's next level. It's cool. Three girls and one boy. I love having girls. It's awesome. It's the fucking best. Anyway, so oh, uh, catastrophobia, and and I'd hear it, and my older kids used to just call it. Oh, you had an image, or you had an image, because I would sit in the car and I'd just be driving, and it would just be totally random, man. Nothing's going on. It's all fine, and I would go, <gasps> mm. dude, like that, and then and it got it, super bad. Yeah. And my imagination is so acute, like yeah. I'm on perpetual acid. Yeah, me like too. Like, it's just how it is. I don't know if that was from taking too much acid when I was a kid, right. but it just kind of stuck. I never thought of that. And, and, and so I see it. I see it as if it's in front of me. Mm -hmm. And it's gotten better. I've really worked on it getting better, and I really try to divert it because... What did you do? But you, you see things you, you're projecting, or are they just sort of unfold... They unfold. I mean, oh, that's, yeah. yeah, you're projecting it, but it's unfolding in front of your face of the worst things that can happen to your children. And I think, you know, not to get all psychological about it, but I think it comes from, it, whether you come from a place that's unsafe and you feel like if I'm going to take care of my kids, you have, to, you have to foresee it so therefore it won't happen. Yeah. You have to imagine every worst case scenario so you're prepared when that if a worst case scenario happens. Yep. I think that's, that's the thing. And I that's love- That's why you're jacked, because you can defend yourself, because it ain't gonna ever happen again. Thank you. <laughs> me too. <laughs> oh yeah, can me I, too. Yeah, anyway, Talk that's the- With you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I love relaxed. that we're all jacked. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Tony Hall. Jack Tony. With you guys. <laughs> yes. Tony, Tony. Catastrophobics. Right. In the house. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Jason. 
Yeah. Nomad started as a Kickstarter project in 2012 with the goal of building ultra rugged and minimalist tools for the 21st century Nomad. Based in Santa Barbara, California, Nomad makes mobile accessories that not only look good, but are there when you need them most. From iPhone cases to Apple Watch straps to wireless chargers, ultra durable cables, and even premium wallets, and a passport holders crafted with Horween leather. Nomad uses American leather for their cases and bands that, America. Just, look, that just look better the more you use them. Nomad has designed brands for Apple Watches that seemingly go from the ramp to a night out. Nomad offers convenient wireless charging solutions for the home, office, and bedroom with a suite of chargers for whatever mobile devices you use, as well as Apple Watch and AirPods. Nomad is a climate neutral certified brand. The attention to detail with these products is amazing. Great look and fit for all Apple products. Nomad is and always will be the company that prioritizes design and quality over everything else. Nomad designs all concepts from the ground up rather than white labeling existing products. Check out Nomad at nomadgoods.com slash hawkwolf to see what living the Nomad life is all about. That's N-O-M-A-D-G-O-O-D-S dot com slash hawkwolf. Be sure to use the code wolf to save 10% on your first order. Tony's like, I don't, I, I don't go through all that dark shit. Yeah. Life is really fun, isn't it? Yes. Right? <laughs> Yay. By the way, I got to tell the story really quick. So the liquid death, yeah. Mike. Yes. Right? Yep. And that's the ramp that he went into, right? Yep. So Mike called me and he said, so he called me a while ago when he ended up on Point Doom and he was like, hey, I got a motorcycle. I know you have a motorcycle. I said, well, come ride with me and my buddies. Mm. We took him for a ride and it was fine and all that. Pretty quiet guy. Yep. And I was like, look, liquid death, like I don't know what the, you know, how, the onset of liquid death and how it happened. He kind of explained it to me. It was a marketing gag and then it turned into this amazing thing. And I think it's this amazing thing. And he said, we're thinking about doing another round of investment. And I said, I think I want to invest. And we start kind of hanging out and talking a little bit. And then, which plays into our thing. He called me at one point or he texted me and he goes, Hey, I got this idea. What do you think? And I think his ideas are pretty good. Like what he just did with Travis Barker is insane. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that it works so well. So he's obviously got his fingerprint on something that's working. And he's like, look, what if I get a camera crew to come over to your house and then you put on the same wardrobe that you had on in thrashing, but you're, and I had a big gray goatee at the time. <laughs> and he was like, and you're an old guy skating, but you keep falling because you're trying to be like you were, but you're not anymore because you're like old. And I was like, what the fuck did you just say? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's a little puzzle. I literally yeah. was like, and I was texting and I was like, what the fuck? And, and it lit, my thumbs were like angry. And I was like, what a fucking break you bitch. Yeah. And then, and then it kind of got really shitty. And now we see each other and it's all good. Anyway, we didn't, we didn't do the investment or anything and I still drink tons of liquid death and I see him, I'm like, hey, how you doing? But it was- Wait, you didn't do the invest investment based you on that interaction? That. Because of, it got a little tense. And wow. I was like, I'm out. And he said, I'm out. Wow. And whoever said we're out. Beef. It's good to know that some of these ideas are terrible. Brolin's got beef. But, but it wasn't, but it's not necessarily terrible because the guy has brilliant ideas. Yeah. yeah. They're unconventional. I like, yeah. I just yeah. don't want to be that dude. Yeah. You don't want to be Corey Webster. I don't, I don't want, no, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want an enema in my name and all that. I don't want, you know, Travis Barker, whatever he did. Anyway. I, I'm I so thankful that you've always had this, this tether to the skate community and surf community. I, I, and I know that you could have easily have dismissed it after thrashing whatever else, but um, like, you did Grosso's show. Like, that was one of the coolest things ever. Yeah, it was fun. You know? I really enjoyed doing that. Yeah, it was, what, six months before he died? Yeah. Something like that. But yeah, yeah so. there's, there's always been a thing. I mean, Grosso, all the guys, and it all came out of thrashing because I was a skater before that. I was never a great skater, but me and Jason Sears and Matt Mondragon and all these guys who became like Jason got semi-famous, at least in the punk rock community for RKL. And then Matt Mondragon was on the cover of Surfer Magazine at some point, and now he works at a prison or whatever. He's a big dude now. He was a little skinny guy back then, but an amazing surfer. And a lot of those, you know, we grew up with Tom Curran. Tom Curran's mom used to take us to all these contests, WSA and NSSA contests. So it was a 
bit major Sparks. Do you remember Sparks and Galita? Yeah. That was a... You skated there. Oh yeah, that's where we skated. That's OG. It was, that's what OG. Kind of is that? It was just it was one, like of, the, one like, of the first skate parks. Yeah, like, like Reseda, Skater in, Cross. Yeah, exactly. like that era though, before Whittier, Big O, Upland. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so Sparks was one, golf and stuff was yep. one. I did, I did contests at golf and stuff, but I was an okay skater. Pools? I got, like huh? you were skating pools? Oh yeah. You like grinding and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. I was bad at air. What was, but could you I do could one? I do rock and rolls. I could get a little air. I wasn't, you know, I got a few. Look at me, I'm getting all nervous. <laughs> um, I was never, but you know, you looked up to those, to Z-Boy guys and then, you know, he was major in our world and then thrashing happened. You're like, wow, I'm around all these dudes. That's yeah. like a major thing. So it was kind of like in Santa Barbara, we were kind of like, the end men up in Santa Cruz. It was like nobody cared about us, but we were, you know, we were like the real deal. Yep. And and then and then I got to know those guys, and then that kind of grew. And I came from a surf community called Cito Rats, and then that was kind of like Dahui or Wolf Pack or Bra Boys, and we had our own thing up there. And then you know the epidemic, the heroin epidemic came in. And Thirty-six of my buddies were gone mm. out of about fifty. And, but it was, so now I know all those guys. Yeah. I know Eddie and from Duhui, Duhui, I know, you know, I know all those guys, you know, Bra Boys and all those dudes. And we were like, oh yeah, I knew about you. And we heard about you doing this. We heard about you. And everybody's trying to kind of up. Yeah. And it was Z-Boys that were like pretty mellow, except for Jay. You know, <laughs> yeah. everybody was mellow. Right. Jay was kind of like us. So to bring that, to have, you know, to like get out of that and be like, I want to, do something better than that because I know how that's going to end, but never being able to release myself from it completely. Right. You know? Yeah. And now it doesn't exist anymore, so now it doesn't matter. Were you hesitant to get into acting based on your father's success? Yeah. Oh, yeah, in a major way. Had no interest. No oh, interest. No interest. Zero. Like, when, my, when I got into it, my friends were like, what? You know, like, why would you do that? How did Goonies come about? It was all an accident. I got kicked out of my house in Santa Barbara by my mom. I went to live in my dad's apartment. He was living in an apartment at that time down in L.A., and I slept on his couch, and I like, wanted to get my shit together because I was doing some pretty, you know, I'd been to jail a couple of times already, and, and then I, I was like, and I started doing karate, taekwondo, and I was like trying to be healthy, and I was like, what could I do? And I made up a resume, all like 100% lies <laughs> and I went from agent to agent and saying you know they were like you know so you did you know you did you street, your version of streetcar on stage at the Librero International Theater which doesn't exist yeah. and you're like yeah and did your go, dad help you with all these lies no, that's all you at all but did they recognize your name I recognized the name which was also like either people let me in the door because of the name or they challenged me like, I remember there was one lady that said, yeah, like, aren't you Brolin's kid? And I go, yeah. And they go, and you want to be an actor, huh? And I go, yeah. And they go, so act. And I was like, what do you want me to do? Like, I got a couple monologues I got prepared, or you want me to do that? And she said, thanks for coming in. That's what I thought. And she turned around. So I would get that. Wow. So there was that. And I think yeah. that's more old school. It's like, do you really deserve to be here? I'm not right. going to give you the chance, the nepotistic chance, because you're Brolin's kid and that kind of thing. But I don't think that was a bad thing. I don't think, mm -hmm. like, Goonies was a really good thing, but it was unrealistic. Goonies was so amazing <laughs> that afterwards, I thought Goonies just kept happening. Yeah. Right. Then you do Thrash, and then you do Highway to Heaven, and then you get a career out of it. So I think... It happened in the way that it should have, where I went to New York and I started doing theater. Yeah, that's what you told me like, when we saw each other at Tarzan. Right. And I said, yeah, that was my cue to leave Hollywood and go yeah, to theater. Yeah, that's exactly. So thank God it happened because it got mm. me motivated. And I was mm -hmm. like, look, I'm not going to, if I'm going to do this, I want to be good at it. And why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. Because behaviorally, it's super fucking interesting. Like what makes people tick? You know, why do I like... Why do I like uh, French Connection? Why do I like Dog Day Afternoon? What is it about those movies? Yeah, they're cool and they're badass and they're, they're you know, guy robbing a bank or a guy running from a thing or a, you know, a corrupt cop and all that. But what is it behaviorally that I like? And what I found out at that point is exactly still what exists now because I always want to get out of the business. 
Like I go, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. I just get, you know, and then I go, okay, I got to take a couple of days. I, maybe I'll go watch behind the scenes of like, you know, uh, uh, Raging Bull or something or, you know, Taxi Driver. And I see people, to editors talking about like, oh my God, De Niro had this moment. We didn't even see it while we were filming or Scorsese's talking about something. And then I get all jazzed up again. And I'm like, yeah, well, this is a good thing. <laughs> this is just about celebrity and Instagram and, you know, how many people are following you and all that. And then you get back. You do. I mean, you, you can tell. I just can, I can tell from your acting, especially in like No Country for Old Men. And you're, you have such a reverence for the craft. But what I was wondering is what was the spark either in New York or later on that it was like, all right, I can get back into the film or, or what, was the, what was the opportunity? I started doing, I did a series called Young Riders, which was cool. They offered me the lead and I didn't want the lead because there was a supporting part that I thought was a better part. So I kind of got what I, and even though they go, you, you know, we're giving you more money, we're giving <laughs> you like four times the amount of money. I said, I don't want it. I wow. want that part. And then they ended up making that part kind of the lead, even though it was an ensemble. Is that something that you usually do? Is that a, do you, have you ever looked at it like that? Or was that I your think, first time? On it, it sounds, it sounds like a kind of like a look what I did kind of thing. I think it, when I look back on it, cause it's been long enough, yeah. I think the whole seat the rat thing and how I grew up, kind of lent myself to that. Yeah. So there was a moment that I had where I got offered, I think, was it before that? It was before that. There was a series called Private Eye and they were doing like a nationwide search for this guy to play this kind of Elvis character, big pompadour, leather jacket, 1950s. And they were looking everywhere for this dude. And I was nobody. So they go, they go, uh, and, th and then I got this offer. I read for Frankie and, and Annette, Frankie Avalon and Annette Funicello's Back to the Beach. And it was like those 60s movies that were really popular and it was them coming back to do a movie. And everybody goes, this is gonna be huge. And I got offered like the, surf, the dumb surfer guy, you know, like, oh, what's up, dude? You know, and then we were like, you're perfect. <laughs> Why don't you do that? And my agent said, hey, you got this offer. That's great. You haven't had an offer for a year you know, this is a good thing for you. And I was like, yeah, I kind of want that other role. I kind of want the, the nationwide search role. And they're like, yeah, that's never going to happen. And I was like, yeah, I don't really like this role. Like Annette Funicello and Frankie Avalon is not really my thing. Yeah. It feels just a little too soft. Yeah. And then, so I went for the other role and I turned down that role and I got called by five agents. And I remember one agent said, you're an idiot. Like, I just want you, I want to be straight with you. You're you an idiot. You just called to tell you you're an idiot. You're an idiot. That's cool. And that's it. So the, the agency almost dropped me, and I ended up getting that role somehow. And then that kind of started a trajectory into that. So like that was it. You decided crap. to make like a a move that could be like a career-ending move or, or... The fact that I was saying no to anything at that point yeah. probably wasn't any uh, anybody's idea of smart. What, what possessed you to... You just felt it. And then from there, because it sounds like once that happened, you were like, oh, we're on a roll right now. Was there a different, nothing like that? No mind shift, just like I'm lucky or anything like that? Just, just, hey, and who knows it's what's not, next? It's not like, of course I got it. I mean, I was really stoked to get it. Yeah. And it was hard to get. Yeah. But it was one of those things like, this is, this is what I want to be doing. That's where the focus is. And not, oh, if you focus on it, you can make it happen and visualize it and it will make it happen. It wasn't that. It was just like, this This is not what I want to do and I would rather not have a career, which kind of lent itself to later. Like I just did a TV series called Out of Range and there was a series that I did called Mr. Sterling and I hated it so much that I said, I would rather not have a career than do TV again. And I didn't do TV for 20 years. And then that's when No Country happened. And had I continued doing TV, I didn't know that, but I was kind of thought I was, my career was ending. And then when I stopped doing TV and I wasn't getting work and then No Country kind of came out of nowhere about a year and a half. I started trading stocks full time. That's how I was making money. What? Really? Yeah. Trading what? Stocks. 
I was trading full time for four years. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so that's four wild. years, uh, how, how long were you? I sound like I'm full of shit. It, <laughs> no, it, dude, I'm taking this as. You know he padded his resume, so yeah, totally we don't know right. what to believe. I know, I lied from the beginning, bro. <laughs> 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 we're not sure which John Bowen we're getting, <laughs> yeah, but here right. we are. Holidays are here and that means one thing. It's time to break out your favorite jeans, t-shirt and sweaters from True Classic. True Classic's ultra-comfortable, perfect-fitting essentials makes for a perfect gift for the man in your life. Everything they make is crafted with premium fabric to help you look and feel great anytime, anywhere. And now, for a limited time, this November, they're giving our listeners a special Black Friday deal all month long, up to 50% site-wide. TrueClassicTees.com slash wolf. Look, I'm a, ever since I've been a pro skateboarder, I've been given free T-shirts since I was a little teenager. And if you tweak my neck on my T-shirt when you're talking to me, you're not my friend. I don't wear T-shirts that look jank. I haven't done that since I was 13 years old, and I'm not about to change it right now. True Classic have good T-shirts. After you wash them, you put them back on, they still look new, and they fit good. They, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to admit it, but maybe I got a little bit of a dad bod sometimes, and it hides it well. So I like them. I wear them all the time. True Classic completely re-engineered how T-shirts fit. They're tighter around the arms, chest, and shoulders. They have a looser fit in the torso. The fabric is ultra soft and makes for a comfortable base layer on a chilly days. Speaking of compliments, their comfort jeans are my new go-to. They got that classic look. They mold perfectly to my midsection with a perfect four-way stretch for max comfort. But seriously, whatever you choose, you can't go wrong with True Classic. In fact, True Classic is so committed to their product, they even have 100% perfect fit guarantee and easy returns. So if you're ready to upgrade your closet, shop now with my exclusive link, trueclassictees.com slash wolf and save up to 50% off during their November holiday sale. End the year with a holiday cheer thanks to True Classic. That's so what about now with all the success? <laughs> do you do you think that it's, because it doesn't seem like it's gone to your head and I feel like if you if you already paid your dues for such a long time and then the this huge amount of success comes, some people, it can still go to your head. But you just seem but like... It, but it depends on like what kind of success you're talking about. It's like it's success for no country. Like for no country, I got paid nothing. Right. I mean, nothing. I mean, very, 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 very little. You know. And then I did American Gangster. I got paid a little more. And but I was broke. And then it turns out American Gangster did well. And I was freaking out because I was broke. And then I got called from you my got, lawyer. Did you get points on that? Well, you were broke. I didn't know. I didn't even know what points was. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like somebody at my in my position at that point, you don't go like, I want five yeah, percent of yeah. first dollar gross. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, and they yeah. go, What is it? what? Yeah. How do you know that? And then uh I was totally broke and I got called by my lawyer and she said, Did you see my email? And and it and and I looked at it and I was like, Thank God. And I thought it was sixty thousand dollars and it literally saved me. Even though that was wow. going to be taxed and all that, I'd probably end up with thirty grand, mm -hmm. twenty-five grand after commissions and all that. And it turned out it wasn't sixty. That was more. You were off of zero. Wow. And I fucking started crying. It was just for like, sure. I was like, "What the? F I don't even know what this is. I've never even seen money like this. I don't know I, what this is. I have that. I've actually crazy. had that exact, uh, not exact, scenario. But, but the scenario where they they offered me half a million dollars for my buyout, for a buyout of video game, video game royalties <clears throat> right when the Verse game was getting released. Yeah. And when the guy said half a million, I was like, that's like telling me half a gazillion dollars. Yeah, totally. I don't like, even what are you know talking about? Is. No one's totally. ever spoken that much money. Yeah. You're crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I took so, a chance and turned it down, but. Yeah, so when I say success, is like there's, there's like a six, there's a success in like no country or for the work. And then there's monetary success. Which like, one means the most to you? Well, bro. Oh. Come on, you know. Just thought I'd But ask. it's not money's not bad. Yep. But when you do like when I did the Marvel thing, when I did Thanos, that was supposed to be a little cameo. Like that was never supposed to be those two movies. That was so a when you cameo. first so when I first did it, they dropped off. I was in London, I was doing Everest and they dropped off this massive Bible. I said, I know nothing about cartoons. I don't I just wasn't I was 
surfing and I was doing drugs, so sorry. Yep. And then they they sent this thing and I look through it, I go, this is so cool. Like this guy was, and the idea of doing a major nemesis, <laughs> purple or not, against all these dudes. Yeah, like had yeah. it been one of the guys, yeah. I don't know that I would have been excited. But the fact that it was this guy against all those guys, I go, yeah, that's really cool and why not? But and just it turned into as this far as you thing. knew, it was just a little role. What shifted the way you, like when did they decide to? I think, I don't know for sure, but I know when we started to do it, I think they were really happy with it. You know, I think that was because of them too. It wasn't necessarily because of me, because I went in with this kind of like Richard Burton kind of Shakespearean thing. And they were like, yeah, that's not, what you're doing is not really working, which is fine. That happens. And they were like, you know, we see him more relaxed and kind of itching his nose. And I was like, oh, because when you think of mocap, you think, what am I supposed to do? Something dynamic. Yeah. And they're like, no, we just want you to be, just be a dude. Yeah. And I started thinking of Brando and Apocalypse Now. And I was like, and then we started paralleling different you know, wow. ideas, and then yeah. I was like, I fucking love this, and I love doing that movie. Yeah, those two movies. But it progressively, them. they put more of you in. Like, how does it work? So they then, I somebody? think they they had ideas, and they were like, "What if we book in this ten years with this guy Thanos, and we'll bring everybody together, and we'll do a thing?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I'll do it." But then, monetarily, it was successful. You right. know, it made like five. Point something billion dollars altogether. Yeah. So we did okay. So I, I had bonuses on that, but they didn't come in for like a billion until it made a billion dollars, but it did. So that. That was the marker on the contract. It had to reach a million dollars. A billion. <laughs> I'm like. Yeah, I'm like, that's never going to happen. Like, that's never going to happen. For him. That's, that's never so going to happen. So. Yeah, not to get into all that stuff, but it, it, it was. So it, you know, so when you have monetary success, it gets confusing. Because then you you get used to that money or you buy a house or you do yeah. a thing, nice thing, and you have people over and you have it catered. And, yeah. and then you're like, that can't be a one a one-off. So yeah. what if I do that again? Well, then, you know, you start to play into that, which I always struggle with, always. My question huh. is uh, when Goonies happened and then you were like, this is the way it is from going forward. And then obviously there was, there was these cycles, but yeah. when you did get No Country and then, and then it started to, on the rise, yeah. Was there still an echo of that where it's like, it's like, oh, this is how it is now. No, never. No, no you were just you're always like, thankful. It to wasn't get the role. that it was going to go away. It wasn't the opposite. Uh huh. It was like you reached a, you reached a foundational level where it's like, okay, I'm I'm going to be comfortable, but it's not always going to be this crazy success. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I think I think it wasn't like if I don't take advantage of this, I'm going to lose it all. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like, oh, I'm on this train and I'm unstoppable. Yeah. It wasn't like that. It wasn't like an ego thing. It mm -hmm. was like, I really like, when I did No Country, I loved working with them so much. Mm -hmm. They're so awkward and fucking weird that I yeah. was like, I just get these dudes. And I get, and it was fun for me, you know? And I liked hanging out with them and I liked how kind of misfit they were. And I was like, these guys just beat to their own drum and I get it and I like it. And I think that, you know, I didn't come across as this like, so what What? What do you want me to do next, sir? Mm -hmm. Sir, you know, I was like, you know, is this Pretty work, subdued. is this work? I think I'd been around for a while. And I was like, okay, so we're doing this movie that none of us know is going to be seen. It's a super weird movie. People probably won't like it. People haven't seen some of your movies. This will probably be one of them. And let's have fun. And we had a fucking blast. How was uh, Tommy Lee Jones? I don't know. I literally don't know. I did three <laughs> movies with him and I don't know. I don't think. <laughs> what? I don't know. What is that? I played mean? him. I played him in Men in Black 3. I played. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, wow. For and so I great. actually saw him and I was like, you know, I, I figured we'd talk about it and we didn't. And I heard through the grapevine that he thought I did a good job, but I just, I don't even know if that's true. I don't know Tommy. That is fascinating. I don't it's, know Tommy. I've met him many times. Yeah, but I, don't know I did him. the Howard Stern show, I think, four or five times, and people always ask me, like, how is, how's Howard? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. And they're like, what do you mean? After all this time, like, he had you back on five times. Surely he tried to talk to you. And I was like, yeah. one time he said to me, you're a photographer. And I said... <laughs> Nah, my wife just bought me a camera. I know it. And that was the end of it. Totally. I was like, I think he was trying to be engage. like yeah. engaged. And, oh, yeah. And, and exactly. I just went, nah. Right. 
And, and then yet up. you're talking like this and you're having an amazing time and there's yeah. this great exchange yeah. and then you see yeah. each other in what, life? And it's like, hi. Yeah, it was totally We're not like in the that. booth. Yeah. Hi. And I was like, oh, it is the, yeah. it is the great Howard That's Stern. Like, it's it's like, David Letterman was the extreme version of that. Totally. totally. <laughs> I remember I got, I had to do Letterman twice, which was insane. Was it? Insane yeah, that yeah. I was even there at yeah. all. Yeah. And uh, we had to clear the hallway when he walked through. Yeah. Don't. I mean, it's Letterman, man. Yeah, it's Letterman. It's huge. Of course. No, I mean, it was it was justified. I did Letterman, I think, three times, and the last time right before he finished, and I love him. I mean, I think he's like one of the greats. Yeah. You know, and and he introduced me as the first celebrity to get arrested this year. I had wow. just gotten out of jail like maybe six days before that. And he was, and I didn't hear it. Oh. <laughs> and I was, when I came out, and I was like, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I didn't I wasn't doing reacting to that, but and then and then he asked me about it and whatever because that's what he does. He's honest. And I'm honest too. But have you seen him no since? Difference. I have seen him once since. He's always super kind to me. Mm. Super kind to me. Yeah. But I think yeah, have you seen his show, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the show is great. Oh, it's great. Yeah. It's amazing. Unreal. Did you do that show? No. 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 That's only I would for, think you that's would only have for the, no. No? No. We're in a different echelon of people. These tickets. <laughs> yeah. Cardi B Maybe. did that shit. Well, it was, I'm trying to give, give him a compliment. No, you, I know. And I was you're trying both to, trying to, and you're both denying it. I feel you, though. <laughs> Good for you guys. <laughs> we're, we're, not, right. we're not in that orbit, but it's fun yeah. to watch. It is fun to watch. <laughs> oh. Are you still surfing? I have a, a lower back thing that when I'm in that position for too long, it freezes. And I had a little piece of property and it was like one of the great moment milestones for me at the ranch at Hollister back in the day. You have property on Hollister? I did. And I got rid of it because they said they were going to do public access and all this kind of stuff. But anyway, I had property on there. Mm. And it was amazing to go into, you can't drive on the beach anymore. We used to be able to drive on the beach. I'd see Tommy. There I got to go once. Seen, you did? It was, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. Crazy. With yeah, nobody like, out. Late 80s, yeah. Bro. And like when the right swell comes in, you're just like, this is insane. You know, you're, you're, you're surfing until literally it's dark. You get in your car, which is right there on the beach, and then you drive, you know, yeah, it's, it's cool. A, it's a property that people buy land on and, and it's private. You, there's no yeah. beach access for anyone yeah. except people who live there. Yeah, unless you're coming by The wave so is sick. It's, the waves yeah, unreal. are sick. Yeah. Like it's more the than... best waves in California. Oh, the best waves. What? There's it was one the first, point that's like it a, was the first ollie I ever did on a wave, and it was by almost by accident because it was yeah. so clean and perfect. And I was like, "Oh, I, oh, just I can got just here. do." It. And I'm going to get another one like this yeah. in five minutes, <laughs> yeah, so I, I can have to wait practice. For it. I can yeah. just kind of do shit. Yeah, it's an amazing, amazing wave. So I was teaching my my now wife how to surf, and it was a fairly big day. And just selfishly, I brought her out because it was good. And it was like a seven foot. It was oh. an overhead day, <laughs> way overhead, <laughs> and she was just getting pummeled. <laughs> and that, but this wave came and it was fucking, where was it? Like, was it St. Augustine's or something? This wave came and it was perfect. And it was the biggest wave of the day. And I turned around having surfed my whole life. And I was like, this is fucking amazing. And I, and I stood up and I stood up like this because my legs stopped working because my lower back had oh, frozen damn. and just something. And it just, it, I, my leash got all caught up in my feet and it just, you know, and at that point, you're just like, dude, I can't do this. Like, I'm going to think about this for a year. <laughs> yeah. I just blew the best wave that's come in all day. So I still surf. I still surf. I've been invited to Kelly's uh, wave a few times. I yeah. haven't gone yet. We were I there the other go. day. Really? Yeah. The other day? Uh, I mean, a couple months ago, but yeah. I Did hit you my head surf? a lot. It's the other day to me. Was it great? It was yeah. awesome. It's amazing. It's yeah. Did you get barreled? Yeah. He did. Fuck, dude. I suck. Whatever. I'll be back though. It doesn't matter. Yeah. No, doesn't. I had accidentally the most, I'm a terrible surfer, always have been. I don't really try that much either. And yeah. this time I was like, yeah, like put, who's a beginner? I was like, oh, I am. And you know, they got the beginner wave and I got up straight away and I was like, this is not good enough for me. Yeah. Let's go to the big wave with the big boys. <laughs> all right, all right. And then it was just like the got first time smashed. I got up on like, it. So, uh, like I saw, because that's the other thing. When you do something that you're so pumped on, yeah. but then one of your best friends is like right there, and I'm like, look, look at, look at, you and, and he's me. like, you're yeah. doing it. <laughs> but he, he, he becomes, made that jump. I mean, he he only rode maybe two of the beginner waves. Really? You know, they, and then you like made the jump to like the yeah. setting, and, and then, then I was like, like, all right, crank it. And I was like, 
Are you sure about you that? Sure? Said, yeah, because you can't get drilled here. Yeah, you can't. And it's concrete. And it's, yeah, it's shallow, too. Yeah, it's shallow. I was trying to get barreled. But he, he got it. He got you it. did. You got the in and out barrel. Uh, no, I got, I just, I got, you got in, barreled and then you ate yep. shit. Yep. Yeah. That's but okay. even that, I was like, I but mean, you that felt food. what it was like to be able to. Yeah, when you see it, I mean, that's something. That's it. Yes. Kind of had my head up my ass at the same I mean, time, back, but whatever. Back in the day, man, you didn't even know what that looked like unless right. you actually right. got a barrel. Yeah. Right. You know? Now you can actually watch YouTube and see what it's like and all these cameras. Or you just you just go for the closeout. Just like, all right, yeah, exactly. I'm it. Why not? We used to do that. We used to practice our takeoffs at a place called Oil Piers down south from Santa Barbara from Rincon. And they don't even have the pier there anymore, but you used to take off. It was a heavy, heavy takeoff, hard takeoff, sand bottom, and it would just pitch. And you could go, it, like, you, it, there was no wave Stand to ride, quick. but you just practice standing up yeah. quick, stay in a dry barrel for like four or five seconds, and then just get pummeled. All day long. <laughs> so Amazing. Great. So cool. So yes, I still surf. I, I, I surf a, a longer board now because of that. I stay off my board most of the time. And then when I stand up, I'm like, cool, I forgot. I can surf. I'm, you know, it's fun. Are you a guy that would do stem cells? I have. Right. They're pretty good, aren't they? Did you have to go out of the country? They are good. And I had my back done. I had was in Panama. Yeah. Guy named Neil Reardon. Uh, that Mel Gibson told me about that basically did, saved did the his effects, dad's life. Did yeah. the effects last or did it, no. did it fade away? No, because stem cells are like PRP where like it can work sometimes, it cannot work sometimes, mm. it can work for certain things. Like we met a girl in, in the elevator who had had totally debilitating MS. And she's talking to me like she's talking, she goes, look, I've had six treatments. I couldn't speak. I couldn't walk. Dang. Wow. And she's talking to me like you and me. And right. she's like, this has been I've like been a to Columbia twice, Bio Accelerator. And when I was still a pro skateboarder, I, there was no way I could run and there was no way I could kneel on my knees without knee pads on. Right. And then I got these shots and I'm, I'm, I did a 540 last weekend. No way, dude. Yeah. First, First one in 12 years. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. No shit. With all the old guys there, like all fucking based, elastic. All, all based on the stem cells? I mean, For the most part, and exercise and all that kind helped. of shit? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like, I, it's, it's not doing that trick. It's, it's the falling off. Yeah. The of last course. two years, every time I fall now, 52, yeah. like I've blown, my, I've blown every, ten, every ligament in my yeah, knee. Yeah, so yeah, 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 some yeah. of them I don't have anymore. Yeah. But it holds on. Yeah. Like, am I sore than usual? Yeah, it's kind of yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, but if you don't fight it, that's the worst thing if you don't fight it. If you don't mm -hmm. do those stem cells and if you don't exercise, like I had sciatica for a year and a half, yeah. personality changer. Like yeah. the worst thing, I had a nine millimeter slip between S1 and L5. Oh. And I just felt pain all the time. Yep. And, and I was taking Advil, which is horrible for you yep. and all this kind of shit. And then I finally found these dudes who I don't, I didn't trust at all. And I would like constantly, every exercise was like, why do you want me to do that? Yeah. You know, but then I did it and did it and I exercised and it got worse and worse and worse and worse and then it disappeared and it never came back. Is so that what it was they the said? exercise they said, you, you, that created the lack of inflammation oh, okay. that helped. Yeah. But they did say that it's going to get worse before it gets better. They, are, no, they had told you that? I no? think they were totally improvising. They had no idea what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm convinced, but it, worked. But my it son, did work. My son Riley wants to do the one he did because um, he's got his ankles or just he just feels like he doesn't yeah. have the yeah. mobility they used to have. And so I inquired loosely, like, could you help my neck? Because it yeah. really hurts all the time. Yeah. And I think I think I qualify for it. So oh, cool. We might yeah, be moving You should do there. it. Yeah. I get surgery on the second. I got a bone spur right there that's oh. now started to radiate into my ankle. I've had this that. is like an old man podcast. This is yeah. cool. It is now. And then I've had the exact. <laughs> I've had the exact. So then, about there was, then there was impotency. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> Wait, we might have a sponsor that can fix that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, you knew, you knew what you were in for. <laughs> I did. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're 50 plus I know, skaters but it's just the reality. Yeah. So. But, but All what's I cool is you guys are still doing stem shit. stem cells, and I'm good. You guys are doing cool shit, and it's active, and that's why it's fun. Coming where we come from, even though it's all different, it's kind of the same. We come from the same mentality. Yeah. And to see guys like now, I'm 55, you're what? 52? 55. You're 55? Yeah. Fucking A, dude. What kind of cream are you using? No, I'm just kidding. And you're 52? Yeah. 52. This guy's talking. 
I know, he's right? A, he's, he's Thanos. Thanos. Like, Thanos. come on. Whatever. Um, <laughs> but the fact what? that we're still out there doing it, I think is cool. We're still out there, yep. like, you know, getting cuts okay. and scrapes and broken legs. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's ever I been a... I prefer not to do yeah, that I know anymore. That. But I know that. Yeah. You know what? And I know we're going to wrap it up soon, but you were one of the first people to reach out to me and I broke my leg. And that meant a lot to me. Right on. Good. Like he sent me a message. He yeah. said, dude, I know it's going to suck, but it's cool you're still doing it and you're going to be okay. And I was yeah. just like, I was in the hospital. Yeah. It's like, wow. That's I was over. hyped. Yeah. So thank you for that. I'm glad. I'm yeah. really glad. It did. It gave me, it gave me, because I was, it was during COVID. Yeah. Like my wife, she went to go like get some for me from home. She came back. She couldn't get in the, to the room. Oh yeah. Because of COVID. Yeah. And I didn't have my phone. Oh, that's fucked. And it was like, I was just alone. And yeah. then at some point they had an iPad in the room for like contacting the staff. Yeah, yeah. I signed into my Instagram. All right. And that was my communication. <laughs> Using their iPad? That was my communication. <laughs> right. I signed into their Instagram. Secretly? Signed it, yeah. And then, right. and then I uh, communicated with my wife through that. And then you sent me a message, DM. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, it was very That's cool. That's crazy. So. I love that. I mean, look, it, honestly, as we get, as for me, as I get older, you're like, look, engaging is the only thing that fucking matters. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like when people are in pain, you reach out to them and you're like, look, you know, that's the thing about, you know, you're talking about being an actor, being successful and all that kind of stuff. The paranoia that I had to lose that was massive. And it always is massive. Mm -hmm. When you start, actually start believing your own bullshit. Yeah. You know? And you're like, God, you know, you wake up in the morning, you go, fuck, I'm the shit, man. Yeah, I've, I've done that a couple shit. times. I'm just let people come to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That That's when you long. know you're dead. You've done it a couple of times, and I know people, but you learn, and you make mistakes. And I love what Joaquin Phoenix, when he was going through that whole Oscar thing with Joker, which I think is one of the greatest movies I've ever seen, um, you know, he said, we're not allowed to make mistakes anymore. You know what I mean? And how do you grow if you don't make mistakes? And you're, you're in the position that whatever you're in, I've been in different positions where suddenly, you know, I'm drinking my, going to jail all the time. I think it's cool. I'm gonna fucking leave an amazing legacy. I'm a Cito rat. Never not gonna be a Cito rat. I'll be the guy in jail that gets an Oscar. Fuck everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh. And, and then you just go, you know what, man? You get to an age where you just like, just do the best work that you can and, and like keep people in mind and it's all good. If you can die with a smile, it's all good. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, man. Thanks for... Thank you both. I couldn't wait to meet you. I like, so really, excited. Yeah, me too. Me and too. I, I and really appreciate you making you time. Again. You're always genuine. You're always very generous. And, uh, yeah. Sued, Thank from you. thrashing to here, we made it. <laughs> we made it. We but we're made still it. trying. <laughs> we're still, we're still we banging <laughs> away. Thanks, man. All right. Well, I can describe. Fun. What do you thrash? Us. Ha, 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 ha.